We're really bringing out the thesaurus today, aren't we? Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by Two Brits and a Bible. Today is day 67 and today we're covering Deuteronomy 28 and 29. In Deuteronomy 28, Moses speaks to Israel about blessings if Israel obeys God and curses if Israel disobeys God. And in Deuteronomy 29, Moses reveals uh, or reviews, sorry, Israel's origin and history and explains God's covenant and consequences for disobeying. Wait, let's crack on, shall we, boy? Oh, ah, I tried to farm and ended up Welsh. I apologise. Kind of a bit of both. I mean, I couldn't do farm or Welsh, so, you know, the fact you can do both at once is almost <laughs> showing off as well. That's funny. Um, I know you're going to jump in pretty quickly with some of the stuff at the beginning of 28 with the blessings, but I wanted to, I just was reading through the Africa Bible and it said something really quite poignant, I felt, regarding cr- uh, curses. And effectively, it's saying that we need not fear curses of other people. They have no power over us. We should Uh, We should fear what might happen if we don't obey the commands of God, for he's the only one that actually has power to bring blessing or disaster. But we rejoice. We're in good hands. God does not bring disaster on a whim for his own power, nor for no good reason. If we stand in righteous obedience, we stand in God's blessing into eternity and we are free from the fear of curses. I think that. Even in this day and age, some people are like, oh, I'm just cursed. Oh, there's a curse. If bad stuff happens, we immediately, or we can, over-spiritualize things. But when blessings come upon us, we think, oh, I've done so well. I'm doing so good. When bad stuff happens, oh, it must be I'm under attack. I'm being cursed. We don't have fear of that because God, well, Jesus came to save us and set us free. And God is stronger and more powerful than any curse that anyone could have uttered over you, human, demon, whatever. So I think it just, yeah, it's well, just a bit of a reminder that actually we need to stand strong in God's favor and blessing over us rather than focus on the cursed side of things. Absolutely, man. And that's the whole thing, right? Jesus already defeated sin and evil. Like the victory's already yeah. won. So um, I uh, thought that, you know, one of my favorite bits was just the, dichotomy between Deuteronomy 28 7 and Deuteronomy 28 25 so Deuteronomy 28 7 the Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you they will come at you from one direction but flee from you in seven that's the blessing image so you've got the idea that the enemies will come in a united front one solid front but they'll be dispersed seven ways whereas if you the curse side of things You'll go at them one way, so you'll think that you're united together, but not under God's will, and you will then be split up into yeah, seven. Yeah, interesting. And I just, I love that. I also mentions that. the number seven. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even think about that. That's how excited <laughs> I was about the imagery. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. I and I just but think... You've got a dichotomy written in there. I had hyperbole written over my side, and I can see later on you talk about anthropopapism again. So we're really bringing out the thesaurus today aren't we we are the reason i mentioned hyperbole is because uh when it's talking about the curses for disobedience some of this stuff is super harsh and it's not explaining things that actually did and would happen to israel it's just the hyperbole of like if this then this is like the extremes just don't go down that path type thing absolutely i i mentioned that's also a fancy way of saying that is it's the subjunctive mood it's what could happen so yeah there are some perks to being an English teacher, nerdy moments yeah. like that. Um, and to just add to what you said, I had put, um, I think that a lot of this was meant to be symbolic and to stir up both positive ideas of victory and glory, the blessings and negative emotion. Yeah. Yeah. The and I just put illiterate B-A-M-E, which if you're wondering is Bronze Age Middle Oh, I did wonder when I saw that in the, in the show notes, but... Yeah. <laughs> that's what he's doing this for i think um and you kind of get a sense of it being a bit like how you would talk to a little kid honestly right if you do well then you get the cookie and if you do badly absolutely i love the fact that you've referenced bronze age middle earth we chatted about getting that into some merch we actually had our first merch request the other day for um that's above my pay grade so if you're interested in any merch that we may throw out there at some stage let us know because i don't know it could be i 
I love the. Uh, it could be something, man. I love the fact we both have black tumblers most of the episodes as well, and I love the idea of above my pay grade or Bronze Age Middle Earth on. It's the on same Yeti one tumbler. as well. I changed out the lid on mine, but I think it's the same one. Uh, yeah, I got the uh, little mag. Yeah, you got the, wow, we should probably nice. talk about the Bible. Yeah, yeah, we should. <laughs> um, so uh, I just got a couple more things, honestly, for the day. Just as it pleased the Lord to make you prosper and increase in number, so it will please Him to ruin and destroy you you will be uprooted from the land you are entering to possess that seems incredibly harsh but also there is a sense of justice like he enjoys perfect justice so if you deserve destruction then it's just and therefore enjoyment but i do think this is also anthropopapism i don't think that god actually enjoys this in the way that we think of enjoyment it's more the satisfaction of he's a perfectly just being and therefore it, it pleases him that there is perfect justice in his. Yeah. Universe. What, um, what actual verse was that? Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 63. Okay. Because I had highlighted Deuteronomy 28, 47, which says a very similar thing, but very differently. It says, because you did not serve the Lord, your God joyfully and gladly in the time of prosperity, therefore in hunger and thirst, in nakedness and diet and poverty, you will serve the enemies the Lord sends against you. So it's, it's saying the same kind of thing, basically. It's like, if you're not going to worship God and thank him for the good stuff, then the bad stuff's going to come on you. Yeah, <laughs> again, yeah. no, you're right. Um, no, it's repeated as well, though, like you say, because the, a lot of the people would be listening to this. So, again, I know we've mentioned this before, but I think that's why things are repeated in multiple ways to try and just reach as many of them as possible. So they actually understand yeah. um, I, you're going to do a lot on Deuteronomy 29, which is good because I haven't got very much on it. But the final thing I'll just say is uh, Moses summoned all the Israelites, Deuteronomy 29, too. And I just said, even if you think about that, that's an insane undertaking. Just hundreds of thousands of people. Like, oh. I summon you. Come Yours here. team, assemble. <laughs> they were like running out. Yeah. So I just thought even that was kind of cool. And with that, I'm yeah, out. Right. That you're, um, you have that's cool. So yeah, there are a few things that jumped out to me in 29. I love the fact that sometimes when you're reading a passage, I won't pull stuff out of it, but they're not like it just works pretty well, doesn't it? Um, first one was a kind of a wait what again um because it says deuteronomy 29 5 during the 20 during the 40 years i led you through the wilderness your clothes didn't wear out or the sandals you ate no bread and drank no wine but i'm pretty sure we'd seen references to them eating bread and drinking and stuff so i was like yeah yeah well ask josh um then one thing that i really liked is 29 verse 18 uh the second part of it says make sure there is no root among you that produces such bitter poison and it's just that the visual aspect of a root and you can deal with so many surface level issues but unless you tackle the root of any problem of uh, of sin in your life of issues in your marriage of anything basically you have to dig out the root of a problem um i think melody and i we've been through some marriage counseling um and i think that it has been an incredibly valuable thing i encourage anyone to go through counseling whether you feel like you need it or not because it can really help you even in areas you don't realize you need help um right but to actually handle the root of stuff it reminds me of the days where i was working with uh, paul thomas and you did a few days as well and particularly stuff yeah. like nettles and uh like weeds if you don't like the roots are designed to snap the roots don't naturally just pull out and because they snap if any bit of root is left the rest of the weed can continue growing and so unless the root right. is fully removed and that takes a lot of cultivation to get rid of everything around it to get rid of all the root that's a lot of under taking it's a lot of work it's a lot of hassle but unless it's done properly and that root is fully gotten rid of then it can just continue to to fester and regrow in your life so it's just yeah. it's, it's massive um, it's massive and then the last little thing on there was uh, 29 24 and 25 why has this happened it's because the people abandoned the covenant they made with god and it's just to me that kind of proves god's there in the good and the bad basically so yeah, that brings another day to a close. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, visit us at Two Brits and a Bible on Instagram. And please consider liking and subscribing to help spread the word of God. Something that came up there that I kind of wish I could have said, but you know, when Jesus is talking about you'll know false teachers because a bad plant cannot create good fruit. Yeah.
starts all the way at the bottom of the roots, yes. I guess. 